hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Juliet. so in today's video i will be showing you how to make the upper part of this lovely dress so here i have my fabric i folded it into two using the bust measurement i am working with divided by four plus extra three inches and then the length is from the shoulder to half length plus one inch of allowance so first I'm going to mark half of the shoulder measurement I'm working with plus half inch. So that's the shoulder divided by two, then plus half inch. Then I'm working with the armhole of nine inches. So here I'm marking the shoulder again divided by two plus half inch. And then I'm going to connect both points with the ruler. And then I will curve my armhole like so. So next, on this folded end, I came in by 3 inches and then on the armhole line, I came down by half inch and I'm going to connect both points together like so. Next, I'm marking the neck width of 3 inches and then the neck depth of 3 inches as well. So this is for the front, the neck is 3 by 3. So next I'm marking the shoulder to nipple I'm working with, which is 11 and a half. And I also mark the shoulder to the under bust, which is not necessary. The shoulder to nipple is fine. Next I'm marking the bust bar measurement I'm working with divided by 2 plus half inch so i'm working with eight inches divided by two that is four plus half that is four and a half so i marked it all the way down and i connected into a straight line and then on this armhole point i'm going to mark four and a half inches down and then connect to the bust point like so so next i'm going to mark half inch on both sides so on this down part for the dart And then I will connect to the bust point like so. Then on the armhole, I'm going to also mark half inch on both sides of that line and connect back to the bust point. On the down leg of the dart, I am going to extend it by one inch and then curve a new armhole. Next, I am cutting. So this is it for the front. I'm marking 10 inches from the shoulder, which is about 7.5 inches from the neckline. And that is where our slit is going to stop, but that will be later. So next I'm going to be marking the back. So the back here is folded into 2 using the bust divided by 4 plus 3 inches and then another 1.5 for zip. And then the length is the same as the front. Here I'm marking 1.5, which is the zip line and then I'm using my ruler to connect it all the way so next from that zip line I will mark half of the shoulder measurement divided plus half inch so shoulder divided by two plus half inch of allowance I marked armhole of nine inches as well and then I'm going to connect with the ruler 
and also curve the armhole. Next, I'm going to from that zip line again, mark three inches in, and then on the armhole line, come down by half inch, and then connect just like we did in the front. Then I'm marking the neck depth of one inch for the back, and then the neck width is going to be three inches, same as the front. So I'm covering the neckline like so. Next, from the shoulder, I'm going to mark nine inches down. Which is where the back dart is going to stop or going to start. Then on this down part, I came in by half inch and I'm going to connect in the slant to that nine inches point. This is to help eliminate the zip bulge. Then I'm marking the dart, which is four and a half inches, starting from the zip line all the way down. Using my ruler to connect that, I also marked half inch on both sides. And then I'm going to connect to the 9 inches point, like so. So next on the armhole side, I still came down by 4.5 inches and then I connected to the dart point like so. I also went ahead to remove half inch on both sides, which is not necessary even though I did. Next, I'm going to extend the under that leg by one inch again, like I did before the front, and then curve a new armhole. So next I'm opening the back piece into two and I'm going to cut out that uh, slant on the down part. So that is it for the front and the back. I'm going to go cut lining pieces exactly the same for all of them. And here you have it. So the next step is to join the princess darts together. So here's the front. I'm going to place two of the sides. Right sides together and then starting from the down part, I will sew all the way to the armhole on both sides. I'll do the same for the lining and then for the back as well. So I'm going to go join the two pieces together like so. Starting from down, I'll sew it all the way to the armhole like that and then repeat the same for the lining pieces. So after sewing, I have ironed and this is what the front is looking like. I ironed it open like so. And this is the lining. This is the back. I've ironed and I also notched the cuff point because the back needs to really relax. So I notched that point that is curved. Next, I'm going to go join the lining to the back. I placed it on the right side and then I'm going to go sew on the zip side only so lining right sides together with the main fabric and then i'll sew on the zip side using half inch and then for the front the the upper part has uh, an opening in front so i'm going to place the lining piece on top of the main fabric right sides together then I will mark the seven and a half inches I came down by from the neckline. And then I'm using my pins to first of all hold the lining to the neck first before I continue. So after holding the lining to the main fabric using my paint, I'm going to pin the point where the opening is going to stop like so. After that, I will take it to the line to the machine, sorry, and then I will go sew 
about quarter inch away from the center point in, in form of a V also from down and then back up and then here is it so I'm going to cut it open now I'll cut it open all the way to very close to that point but I will not cut past the seam line next I turned it back to the wrong side and this is what it's looking like after cutting so I'm going to go iron it and I will also iron the back pieces at the zip line like so so after ironing this is what we have this is what the front is looking like and then this is the back so I'm placing the back piece on top of the front piece I'm going to go join the shoulders together main fabric to main fabric and then I will join the lining to lining only on the shoulder using half of an inch I will do the same for the second shoulder So after sewing the shoulders, this is what we have. This is the wrong side. And I've also ironed. So next I'm going to fold the neckline into two, like so. So making sure everywhere is properly aligned, I'm going to measure around the neckline, like so so for from the picture you can see that there's an opening in the front so i'm going to make it about one inch so measuring this neckline i placed half inch i started from half inch so half inch is going to be off which is going to form the opening later but it's included in the collar so i'm measuring around the neckline so then you measure and add the half or start from half so after measuring the neckline, I added extra half inch to it. So I got nine from measuring nine and a half plus the half I want to leave in the front, and then I added another half, making it ten. So my fabric here is folded into two. So I'm marking ten inches all the way. That edge is not going to be included in my measurement. So the height of the collar I'm working with is two and a half inches. That is including seam allowance. So I'm marking two and a half inches up. And then I'm going to connect into a straight line. So I have 10 inches here. The half of 10 is 5. I'm going to mark 5 inches like so. And then connect. And then on this side where the, we have the open end, I am going to come up by 1 inch. And then on this first line I will go up by another one inch then I will connect back to the midpoint like so for both the up and the lower line so after that I'm going to cut I'm going to place this again to cut a second piece for the collar. So next I'm going to go iron um, lightweight interfacing on the collar pieces and this is it. I'm placing the two on top of each other right sides together and we're going to go so like so all the way around using half of an inch. So after sewing this is what we have. I'm going to cut off the corners like so. Turn it to the right side and give it a good press.
So after ironing this is it, I am folding it into two and I'm going to mark the midpoints like so. Next I will be attaching it to the neckline. So here is the front. So from that um, midpoint that I marked, I'm going to mark half inch on both sides of that point. And that is the point where the front pieces are going to sit. So one part of this front piece is going to sit on the half inch on one side and then the other will sit on that other side. So at the end of the day, we will have about one inch space in front. So I'm pinning from the wrong side and I'm pinning only one part of the collar piece, as you can see. So I'm making sure it's exactly one inch I have in the middle there. So I'm going to go sew it all around the neckline like so until we get to this other end. And then I will do the same thing on this other end as well, just one side of the collar. So after sewing, this is what we have. That's the opening. I'm going to fold, push up the raw edges and then fold over this other piece like so. And then I'll take it back to the machine and go and stop stitch. After that, this is what the collar is looking like. And then I'm going to go sew the back. Sew the zip line. It's now one inch. So after turning it with the lining, we have one inch left. So I'm going to mark one inch all the way to the top like so. And then I'll go sew with a loose stitch. And then here is it. I've sewn and I've ironed it. This is what this upper part is looking like so far. So at this point, I measured the neck to be sure that I have exactly what I need. Or a little more. But it shouldn't be less than the neck circumference that you're working with. So next, I'm going to go mark my measurements and sew. And then this is what we have for now. I'm going to go further to trim the back piece, the center back in a slant to further eliminate whatever bulge that we want to form there. So I marked one inch up from the center back and I'm going to connect it to the um, side seam. And then I will cut that part off. This is in preparation for attaching the flay that will be attaching to the lower part. So that is it for the upper part of this dress. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe and I will see you in my next one.